Hey guys, I'm back. So, um, uh, let me adjust my mic first. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about CRTs. Let's see if I can CRTs. Okay, so I've all seen CRT tubes. If you haven't, you can look at my channel, but they like that or like that. Now, you're probably wondering how they display image, so I'm going to be going through all the way they display an image. This is regular CRT pixel monitors, not vector monitors, okay? So keep that in mind. So CRT here, it has a couple of components, which are more easily viewed in the animation, or little drawing here. You have an electron gun, usually three of them for each color, red, green, and blue. You have um, yeah, each a different gun. You have a deflection coil, and you have a, um, a little mask like this that permits only the beam to travel through the little hole. So if it hits one of these um, gray parts, it... Um, it just gets absorbed, so that means that there's no dead, there's no space between pixels, like you see here. It's perfectly black between pixels. The pixels aren't blurred between each other. And then there's the phosphor on the screen. So the works is we'll start out with the deflection coils because that's the easiest to add. So you have two coils, right? You have a vertical coil and a horizontal coil. So the vertical coil, as it says, if you apply a voltage across the coil, it will create a magnetic field that bends the beam vertically up or vertically down. And the horizontal coil will do the same, but horizontally left and right. So what they do is they feed both of these a sawtooth wave. And this is what a sawtooth wave looks like about. So you can see here is a, this, this one right here is a very good one. It's a ramp up and then just goes drops straight down. It ramps up, and drops straight down. So, um, the way that th what that does, it means it. Say say this is we're talking about the horizontal one, right? We're gonna start out with something else, a green dot, right? And then that's our dot on the screen, right? It's gonna be all the way to the left. That corresponds to that point there, right? That this point there, at the bottom of the wave. Now as the wave moves up it's going to move the dot across because you're applying more power to the deflection coil and the magnetic field becomes stronger. So here in the middle, you will get a dot in the middle of the screen. Here at the top, you will get a dot on the right of the screen. Okay, so this, this basically moves the beam across the screen. And this sense right there, that um, so when it drops, like right here, right? Since that happens pretty much instantly, the dot goes from being here and then goes back to here. So the way it works is it would scan across and then jump back to here, scan across, jump back to here, scan across. So, and it does the same thing um, to the, um, does the same thing on the um, vertical and the horizontal coils. The only difference is the speed. It does the uh, horizontal very fast, like 16 kilohertz, right? It does the a vertical about 60 hertz. So the way that works is you have a beam being drawn across, and then you have it being drawn across on the next level, and then drawn across, and then drawn across. So the, the coils are just consistently drawing the beams in the same places, right? Across, and then across again, and then across again, and then across again, but each time it's a level down because of those sawtooth waves, right? So that's it. Now. If you're wondering the the aperture grill, right? This is this is what happens when the beams hit it. Okay, you have a bunch of the grill. It lets only the beam go through the right spot, right? So, and also these um the deflection coils, they're just doing the same thing. It doesn't matter what color what's being displayed on the screen. Even if nothing's being displayed on the screen, you still have two sawtooth waves being fed into the vertical and horizontal. Okay, and that 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 modulate that that basically draws the beam across and across and across. So if you like if you had a full screen of white that would just leave all the guns on and you know it would be all white. But anyways, um so what it does is those beams then get sent to the aperture grill and what that does is it's just a series of holes, right? If you were to zoom in up on one like this it's a series of holes, right? Each one of these would be a third of a pixel, right? Red, green and blue. So we could do that. This is our red one. This is our green one. is our blue one. And the way that works is there's three different gun there, guns. There's a red gun, a blue, a green gun, and a blue gun, right? This may not be in the same order, but it's the same colors. 
And so when the red beam comes in and it's it's being sent, it's going to be sent to approximately around the space of, you know, around these pixels. But, you know, it's not going to be perfect because that sawtooth wave is, you know, it might be, the beam might be sent there, it might be sent there, you know, you don't really know. So what this um, aperture grill does is it, it only, it basically absorbs the beam if it's not being sent right to the pixel. So it lets the red beam only be sent through this hole which goes directly to the red pixel. Okay, so if, if the beam hits here, it doesn't get absorbed. It, it gets absorbed. It gets, doesn't get displayed on the screen. And so, and the way that works is right in front of this red uh, aperture hole, I guess we could call it, um, there is a phosphor that lights up red when struck by electrons. So that's how you get the different colors. So same thing with the green one, except there's a phosphor that lights up green when it gets struck by electrons, and the blue one, the phosphor lights up blue. Okay, now the sawtooth waves are precise enough so that the red beam doesn't go through the blue hole, because if the red gun beam went through the blue hole, there's really no difference in the electrons in the beams, it's just where they're sent. So if the red beam accidentally got sent through the green hole, you'd have an extra green pixel. Now I'm sure this happens all the time, and it doesn't happen on a big enough margin, like the red beam may be sent like this, right through this circle like a bit, right? And it might be sent a bit through the green. Now it's not going to light the whole pixel up, right? If you just have a beam going through one little side here like this, it's not going to light up the whole pixel. It's just going to light up where it went through. So if it hits the green pixel a bit, which I'm sure it does all the time, I'm sure that the sawtooth waves aren't that precise that they can hit each pixel every time on the dot, right? But um, I'm sure they're pretty nice enough that to let not too much of the red beam actually get into any of the other holes. So you know, if you, your image is blurry a bit, that could be happening, and I'm sure it happens all the time, but I don't think it really makes much of a difference, because what's a little bit of red mixed in with your green, you probably can't even tell. So, you're probably wondering now, how does the, you know, what, what differs, um, uh, what, what makes, you know, a completely white screen different from a, you know, a completely black screen? Well, here's the thing. The, is that the uh, deflection coils, they're always doing the sawtooth waves, right? So the beam is always getting sent in these, you know, the lines across the screen, right? You know, it's always getting sent there, right? And then the phosphors, the phosphors will always light up no matter when, right? It doesn't even have to be power. So the way they actually decide whether they're going to light up a pixel or not, which is how they change the colors, is they light up the red pixel but not the green pixel, and then this and that, right? Because they can create a really a combination of all the colors using just red, green, and blue. So if they light up the red pixel, you know, it's going to display red. So uh, what they do to actually only light up some pixels, which is how they change the color, like I said, is you only light up, you, you wouldn't light up the blue pixel, you wouldn't light up the red and the blue pixel, or you wouldn't light up the green and the blue, or the red and the green or whatever, right, is that you you turn off the electron beam for a, a split second. So if the beam is coming out of here, right, and you have your three different guns right here. And so when the circuit knows that the, um, say the deflection coil is sending it to the top left pixel, which happens to be red, right, and they, they want that pixel on. So this gun, the one on the left, is going to be the red gun. So it's going to fire a small pulse. The pulse is going to go, it's going to get deflected by the deflection coil over here. To that, it's going to go through the aperture hole, hit the red pixel, right? Now say the next pixel is blue, but they didn't want a blue pixel. Well, the red gun just sent a small pulse. It's The red gun's now turned off because it sent its pulse to the red pixel. It made the red pixel light up. So it's not it's off now. Now, if you don't want to send a blue beam to the blue pixel, you just don't turn on the blue beam. And then if you want a green pixel, you just, you know... That pixel is going to be green. You just send a burst on the green beam, and it's going to get deflected by the deflection coil over here. And so, and because the deflection coil is doing the sawtooth, so that would be the equivalent of like if we're going to do our sawtooth wave like that, right? And then, well, that's pretty bad. If our sawtooth wave is going to be like that, and then down, and then right, so our screen is is going to would be, you know, roughly that wide, right? Um. It would, you know, the, it would just be scanning here. It seems to be going up and up and up. So, you know, it, it really, the way uh, the circuit works is is a way of CRT. I can, basically, you can break the circuit down into a couple of parts. You have the two sawtooth wave generators for the um, deflection coil. And you have this um, circuit that, that basically figures out what the image is, divides the image into pixels, and figures out which color in each pixel needs to be on. And... 
it has the whole image stored in RAM, I would guess. I don't really know how the, it works. It may just come in live, but um, basically decide, it fires off the guns really, really fast in little, small increments such that, you know, it always it scans the screen. And so, um, oh, that's my cat again. Sorry. Such that uh, it, it's firing off for each of the individual pixels, and then... Um, it draws the image. So the image actually isn't coming at you at one time. It's not like you're seeing the whole image. The TV is off. You're seeing the whole image. It's you're seeing you're seeing the uh, image being slightly being redrawn one line at, one line at a time. And since phos uh, phosphor has persistence, is what it's called. Um, when when you're striking this pixel, right, the the one this pixel over here, and you know your, your sawtooth wave is moving. You've waited, you know, a couple nanoseconds, however long it takes it to scan one level, and you're already at the top of the um, sawtooth wave, right? It's it's across the screen now. This pixel may still be slightly lit up because it has a bit of persistence. So you know, by the time you're drawing the top, you know, the TV is basically drawing in lines of colors. So you're not seeing the same image every time. You're seeing the image updated one line at a time. Um, but really, it's doesn't matter because your brain just can't physically your your eyes and your brain can't work that fast and so they just compile it all into one moving image so it is slightly false to say on a CRT TV that you're seeing one image that is um and then you're seeing a series of still images because really you're seeing a series of the same image being updated one line at a time because you know you just have those two sawtooth waves um, changing it and then you have the guns firing off at the uh, their respective times to light up their correct pixels. And when their pixels aren't, oh, be quiet. When their pixels aren't needing to be lit, lit up, the guns aren't on. And it's really simple to um, actually fire off the guns because what the gun is, you have high voltage and you have you know ground. And so what you can do is you can just have a little circuit here, basically like a little switch, you use a potentiometer, triac, I don't know, whatever they use, it's got to act really fast, whatever it is, and it can just switch the ground and on and off, and if there's no ground for the circuit, the electrons won't be repelled, and boom, you know, it won't, you know, the gun won't fire, so that's it, so you basically take the power off of your gun for a split, you, you put the power on the gun for a split second, I should really say, to fire off the pulse. You put the power on for a split second, and then it's gone. Much like if you just tap a lead from a battery to an LED, that's sort of a similar concept, except this gun is being on for like one nanosecond or something. Um, I, I, I don't really know the uh, frequencies correctly, so I couldn't calculate it, but if anybody feels like it, go ahead. So that's the way CRT works. Thanks for watching.